Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I am your host, Sibyla Muti, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. So grab your pen and paper, grab a great girlfriend, get situated, and let's get into the show. What's up, great girlfriends? It's Sybil here, and OMG, I am so excited to be back here on the podcast again. It has been a while, and let me tell you, I have been so busy lifing. Oh my goodness, I took a much needed break from recording to get life on track and get my kids situated in our new home in Los Angeles and get myself acclimated and drum roll also produce and introduce the sixth annual Doers and Disruptors Conference in New York City. Woo! I had to scream that in your ear. I hope you heard that loud and clear. All right, great girlfriends, let's talk about it. Whew! Putting on a conference is always an intense commitment. It takes so much time, so much energy, You know, building the team together, making sure production goes smoothly, gathering the speakers and the brand partners, you know, getting the content just right and really paying attention to everything that the audience will need. And on top of all that, trying to be bad to the bone while doing it. Can we just keep it 100? Because it is so very important that the presentation be presentable. (laughs) So, but this year was explosive, great girlfriends. If you were not there, I feel for you because you missed out on what was the most exciting day of 2021. Let me explain. From the time Great Girlfriends came into our reception at the W Hotel in Times Square, the energy, the love, the connection could be felt a million miles away. So maybe you felt it in your home. We were so excited to see one another again. You know, people have seen each other online and we've been in our bubbles and you've probably seen each other from afar here and there, but to actually be in one event for one experience, one mission, one motive as one unit, it just felt like the force was with us. And so from the kickoff reception, fast forwarding over to Friday, I'm telling you the energy, the connection, The devotion to the experience was on 10,000. Great girlfriends came in from all over the nation, dressed to the nine, honey. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful community of women. And from the time that they came to the door, they were greeted with applause. They were greeted with, I love you. Hey girl, you look amazing. I see you, welcome high fives and elbow bops and dance moves and grooves, all the things, right? And then they came into this venue that was beautifully curated by our art director, Janessa Gerksey, who took the time to create these murals that look like us, that showed us us. When I tell you, like the venue just looked amazing. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. All the murals, all the messaging, the colors, the texture, the lighting, all of the fixtures at the mezzanine in New York City. And I want to shout out the mezzanine because three years ago, there's no way I could have gotten stepped foot in the mezzanine. Not only were they booked to capacity, but I just didn't have the means to create that experience. I was so excited to be partnered with them this year to curate a brilliant experience. And they were so welcoming to the great girlfriends and made sure that we felt like we were at home. So our clubhouse was for the day was the mezzanine New York City, which is at 55 Broadway. And by the way, New Yorkers, the mezzanine has co-working space. So if you're ready to venture back into co-working experiences, you should go to the mezzanine's website and just check out what they have to offer because their spaces are absolutely breathtaking. All right. Saying all that to say, we're in a brilliant venue, beautiful venue, magnificent venue, filled with magnificent women with a fully curated, magnificent experience with brand partners who 
just hovered over us and loved on us and helped us to curate. And I want to shout them out because Chameleon Coffee kicked off the morning with these really, really dynamic cold brews and we had warm brews and it was so good. Then you had L'Oreal who just loaded the bags with all types of lipstick and hair products from Carol's Daughter and Dark and Lovely. Then you had healthy women who partnered with us to help bring the messaging together. And then we had the beautiful ladies, the leading ladies of Ebony Magazine. And Ebony curated a beautiful conversation, a conversation on us doing it our way and what it looks like for women to really take charge. And then Amgen AstraZeneca closed out and sealed the deal by bringing together a wellness panel where we just talked about the power of great girlfriendship and how we use that togetherness to keep us well, to keep us whole and healthy. So I just wanted to shout out our brand partners for being so special and for saying yes. And I want to let you know, great girlfriends, you know, we probably reached out to 100 brands, some of which we had partnered with in the past, some new brands, and these were the ones that said yes. So for those of you who thought that you're supposed to reach out to 100 and 100 say yes, lies and deceit. I am here to tell you <laughs> that you have to commit to knowing that what you have and what you are presenting is worthy of the right partnerships and you've got to keep going. You've got to keep going. Literally down to one week before the experience, we had a partner join on and say, hey, we want to be a part of this. We don't want to miss out. We want to make sure that our messages are aligned with your message. We want to make sure that women feel the support of our brand. And because of that, you know, I feel more confident and more certain that this experience is needed, not just in New York City, but around the nation. So great girlfriends, be on the lookout because we are bringing some events to your city. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am so, so super excited about that. I'm also going to be hosting the virtual experience. If you missed Doers and Disruptors live and in person, November 13th, we will be hosting the virtual experience. Save the date. You want to be a part of it. There's going to be a ton of giveaways, same connection, same ignition. I'm going to be lighting up a whole host of great girlfriends and making sure you fully, fully comprehend all that you are capable and worthy of as you step into 2022. All right. Now, I wanted to talk about this. I want to talk about the win of it all. The fact that success leaves clues. I wanted to touch base on this because the speakers that came to Doers and Disruptors have all created their own measure of success. They're all successful by the world's measures, but they're also successful in their own right. Why? Because they've created terms that they have decided to live by. And success leaves clues, great girlfriends. Even as you start to think about the ways that you've curated your own blueprint, be it for your fitness, your finances, you know, your health and wellness, your career, parenting, marriage, you know, even, you know, traveling and journeying through adventures in life, whatever it may be, you've probably picked up tips and solutions from someone else along the way. So it's safe to say that success leaves clues. But I wanted you to stop and think today, right now where you are, how do you define success? How do you define success? What is success for you? What is the definition of success that makes you confident that you're moving in the right direction? And how can you curate that in the series of experiences and life's adventures that really help to define who you are? When I think about success, and I have said this in so many different arenas and microphones and interviews, etc., success for me is doing the right thing at the right time to get the right results, plain and simple. I grabbed that from our family mentor, Tony Robbins, many, many moons ago, and I love it so deeply because anytime I feel that I'm off sequence, I can go back to that definition of success and say, Am I doing the right thing at the wrong time? Is that why the result is wrong? Am I doing the, 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 the wrong thing at the right time? Right? Is that why the result is wrong? Or look at the evidence of this moment. Right thing, right time, right results. I reference doers and disruptors because that experience was right time, right thing, right results. I knew at the top of the year that I was supposed to put this conference on, but I was so scared to do it because I was like, we're in a pandemic. I'm planning from Memphis, Tennessee at the time, but I'll be living in LA, doing an event in New York. 
Our brand partners are going to want to go in person again. Is it going to be an issue to get people to partner? Will people buy tickets? Do they even want to have doers and disruptors again? Right? So there I was worrying about the success of something that God had already ordained. And I think it's so interesting when we have those moments. What I did was in that moment, I stopped and assessed what was true and what was factual in front of me. And I asked God, and, and you, you can choose whatever your North Star may be, but, but mine is asking God to show me the signs that will point me in the right direction to do the right thing at the right time. Sure enough, the signs started to come in. Hey, is there doers and disruptors this year? Brand partners. Hey, I want to talk to you about your 2021 programming. You know, our team. Hey, are we planning the conference this year? Got to try to figure out, you know, how we're going to make this happen. What's it going to be? And all the certainty that I needed came to me that it was just a matter of us aligning the right things at the right time to bring the right results. So then starts the planning. The planning helps, you know, having a definition for success helps me to plan for the success that I'm looking for. If you don't have a clear definition of success, you cannot plan for it because you don't even know what you're doing. (laughs) So if you want to be able to meet that milestone, hit that place where you really feel that you're winning in your whole body, your being and in your finances, then you've got to be able to look at a measure, right? Very similarly, when you're baking any cake, muffin, creating a croissant, whatever you're doing, if you are one measure off and the heat is too high and you don't add enough water, right? Or you put that cake in the oven while your kids are running around, you are destined to have not the cake you're looking for, but the cake that you baked, right? So the planning part is so essential because if you plan properly, you're able to look at the measurements along the way and the indicators are sitting right before you. So for me, right thing, right time, right results helps me to look at, all right, what are my processes? What is the time frame by which I need to fulfill these said outcomes? And what will be the measures? What will be the indicators that let me know I'm on track? And as I did that, there were so many things that came along the way to try to pull me away from my, my formula, my system. But I know what I know, great girlfriends. I know for a fact that success leaves clues. So I'm always able to reference other times that I used this very same system and was rewarded with the outcomes that I was looking for, that you were looking for as a community that drive and propel us forward. And with those clues, with those breadcrumbs that I'm able to eat off of, and that sometimes it's your own successes, sometimes it's your homegirl success. Sometimes you call a great girlfriend with defeat in your eyes and in your voice, and your great girlfriend is there to say, hold up, wait a minute. Remember the time that you boom, boom, boom? Remember the time that we boom, boom, boom? Remember last week how I did blah, blah, blah? That same success is in our circle. Those breadcrumbs are the, are the nibbles that we need to get back in the zone And commit, commit to the right thing, commit to the processes, commit to the time, commit the, excuse me, commit to the outcomes so that you can see your definition of success. Now, you like me were born into a family where everyone had definitions of success. And, you know, your mom may have wanted you to go to college and get multiple degrees and marry rich and do X, Y, and Z. Your dad may have wanted you to be a dancer or a singer or, you know, Uh, a a, a wealth advisor and you know your sisters may have always thought that you would be better at his fashion and whatever be the case and so those varying definitions of success in your community maybe you lived in a community where there was no definition maybe success was getting out maybe success was graduating high school maybe success was going to an ivy league university whatever it is you may have reached or may not have reached it and then said now what And you had those varying degrees of of uncertainty that come to you as a result of having all of these different voices running and reigning in your head. So I want to help you to clear your head of that today. And I want to remind you, number one, success always leaves clues. You are successful because you are you. That is enough. What you need to ask yourself is, what are the things about me that really make me a winner? There are some things about being great girlfriends that do not make me a winner. I like to sleep in. Sleeping in does not make me a winner. (laughs) That doesn't make me a winner. What makes me a winner is my devotion to my mission. What makes me a winner is my ability to articulate my vision 
better than anyone else. What makes me a winner is my ability to build rapport with other humans. What makes me a winner is my care and consideration of other people. What makes me a winner is my ability to ask big questions. I'm so curious. These are the things that make me a winner. You want to know what are the things about me that wake that make me a winner, right? Then you want to ask yourself, what are the things about me that contradict my wins? Mm. Because that's when you got to get real with yourself and say, you know what? Every time I procrastinate, I'm contradicting my success, my winning formula. Every time I allow fear and doubt to creep in at these high moments or I listen to the wrong people or I watch TV and, and it's disruptive to my formula, those things weigh me down. Or you might have to say, every time I binge eat, right? Every time I pick up an emotional cookie, <laughs> Every time I stay up late past bedtime and I drinking, you know, drinks in the middle of the night and it gives me bad dreams. Every time I put off my dreams and ambitions, every time I allow other people to guide and rule my life, it's contradictory to my success formula. Right. So the objective here is to understand what makes you a winner and understand the contradictions. And then the next objective is for you to put in place barriers to protect you from those things that have come against you or that are sitting on the inside of you that could possibly disrupt your success. So if I know I like to binge eat at night, I'm not going to buy the things that I like to binge eat at night. So if I'm a binge, I'm going to have to binge on salad. And if that's not going to serve me, I'm not going to binge eat at night, plain and simple. (laughs) Or If I know that certain TV shows really make me emotional, maybe it's a certain network where I watch and I can cry all day. Well, I'm going to have to cut that network out of my sphere of access. I can't watch that show or that channel because when I do, it takes me away emotionally. It disrupts me emotionally. It makes me feel sad and low. So I can't watch certain content because it does not support my system of success or I know that when I happen to get with certain friends, I just, I don't, I don't feel like a star. I just feel real basic. They make me feel like I just need to get back into, you know, doing what I need to do to survive instead of really thriving in life. Well, then I have to create a new circle of influence. It's time for me to get some great girlfriends in place. You understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the objective is for you to create barriers And these barriers are going to allow you to protect you from you. The accountability that you create when you put those barriers in place heightens like times five and then times 10 because you can only go up, right? If the wall is too high to climb, I'm not going to climb it. If I make it hard for me to spend money on Amazon, if I take all my credit card numbers out of the, the saved, uh, my, my account settings and I have to t- re put my login, enter my login every single time, I'm definitely not going to spend as quickly on so many frivolous things as I would have in the past. And what does that do? It gives me enough financial, uh, uh, leverage to invest in the things that are really important to me or things that are more supportive of my success formula. So I just wanted to give you those small little nuggets of consideration today because I see you. I am you and you are me. And together, what we bring to the world, what we bring to the table is essential. People need us on the winning side, right? And economically speaking, our communities need us on the winning side. Our children, our youth need us on the winning side, but we've got to be willing to create a formula that allows us to win, that allows for success to govern in our lives and for us to see how we need to move so that we can move further, faster together, right? And also the success that you feel, it becomes a part of your being. One thing that I realized and recognized at Doers and Disruptors as I stood there hosting the entire day Mind you, I didn't eat all day, great girlfriends. I I was so full off of the connection in the room. No piece of chicken could have satisfied me more than what I had that day. But the success of the day for me was the certainty in knowing that I was doing what I was supposed to do with the people that I'm supposed to do it with. That the great girlfriends community matters more to me now than it ever did before because I saw the fruit. 
I was sitting in the middle of the success, having a chance to breathe the same air with women who are understanding the mission, who are on site receiving transformation and setting high expectations for their lives. That for me is a win. All right. So I'm giving you enough to think about today and I'm not going to hold you because I know you're going over your success formula and saying, well, what is my formula? How do I know when I'm successful and how have I been sabotaging? And this is something that we could have talked about, you know, for a whole other hour of the show, but I'm going to leave this with you today because it's so important that you consider all of this as you prepare to go out and conquer in the world. And I want to hear your responses. Email me, at welcome at the great girlfriends.com or DM me at Sybil underscore Amuti. I cannot wait to connect with you. Great girlfriends. I love you deep and I will catch you next week. Great girlfriends. Did you enjoy this week's episode of the podcast? If so, would you please give us your amazing review on iTunes? Every single review helps another great girlfriend get plugged into the podcast, into the community. Speaking of community, make sure you join our Facebook group, The Great Girlfriends. You follow us on Instagram at The Great Girlfriends and on Twitter at the underscore great GFS. Last but not least, we'd like to thank my amazing husband, Kwaku, Sam and Dilly, and all of you for being a part of the global community that makes us so strong. Please remember to share with your friends, keep listening, and keep being a great girlfriend. I'm Sybil Amuti, and I'm out. Peace.